Hello, we're here to complete the sample work for Unit 3 in Geometry. You may have run across a little bit of a conundrum, a problem, uh, in that I ask for sketched examples, and many of the words in here are not really geometric shapes. They're not really drawable or picturable. Uh, simply provide examples in words, uh, and that's, that's perfectly acceptable if the examples are words. All right, so hopefully that'll be fairly clear as we go. Also, you will find that one example oftentimes can serve as an example for several different words. Okay, so we're going to go through these. If you look on the Weebly site, there are 19 words uh, in, this, in this particular uh, lesson or unit. And so we're going to go ahead and define those. <coughs> All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start with I'm going to start with uh, conditional. Okay, and I'm going to define conditional as an if-then statement. And my example, if if it's a Dalmatian, then it's a dog. Okay, and I'm shortening it a little bit. If Dalmatian, then dog. Conditional. <coughs> Next word, hypothesis. The hypothesis is the if part. Okay, and my example is right here. If Dalmatian. Dalmatian serves as the hypothesis. Next word, conclusion. Okay, that's the then part. The then part of a conditional statement. And in this case, the conclusion is dog. Okay, so notice how I've used the, the same example for all three words. And that's perfectly fine. <laughs> Okay, let's go into the next word here, which is converse. And for a converse, you switch, switch the if and then parts. You switch the hypothesis and the conclusion. So the converse of the if it's a Dalmatian, then it's a dog is if it's a dog, then it's a Dalmatian. Okay, that's known as the converse. And notice there's a symbol for it. If, if, if it's a Dalmatian, then it's a dog is A implies B. The converse, <coughs> the converse is B implies A. We switch the arguments. Okay. Now you may have noticed something here. The first statement, if it's a Dalmatian, then it's a dog, is true. But if it's a dog, then it's a Dalmatian, is false. And so we can address something called the truth value. Truth value. Okay. Whether a conditional is true or false. Okay, <clears throat> so in my if it's a Dalmatian, this happens to be true. If it's a dog, then it's the Dalmatian, that happens to be false. So those serve as my truth value examples. Okay, and that brings me to my next word, which is counterexample. Okay, it proves a conditional false. Okay, it proves a conditional false. My counterexample, if it's a dog, then it's a Dalmatian, is German Shepherd. Okay, 
it makes if it's a dog true because a German Shepherd is a dog but it makes it's a Dalmatian false so it's a, a an example that satisfies the hypothesis of the statement but does not satisfy the conclusion <clears throat> and we only need one to prove a statement false so one counterexample proves a statement false just one you can find more but all you need is one okay all right the next word is negation okay a negation is what something is not my example is not a dog if something is not a dog it is something else right <clears throat> it's not the opposite so it's not like the opposite of dog is cat okay it is not it is everything outside that set everything that's not a dog marmot a jellyfish a rock <laughs> right everything and represents everything that is not that thing that's a negation and we're going to need negation to define the next word which is inverse okay not a implies not b and the symbol for that is tilde a implies tilde b so the negation of if it's a dalmatian then it's a dog is if it is not a dalmatian if it's not a dalmatian then it is not a dog okay and by the way that statement happens to be false right because if it's not a dalmatian that does not exclude it from the possibility of being a dog okay inverse <coughs> and that brings us to the word contrapositive 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 is not B implies not A we switch the hypothesis and conclusion and we negate both switch and negate so the, the contrapositive of if it's a Dalmatian then it's a dog is if it is not a dog then it is not a Dalmatian and the cool thing about the contrapositive is it is logically equivalent to the original statement if it's a Dalmatian then it's a dog is true because Dalmatians are dogs if it's not a dog if it's outside the set of dogs it is not a Dalmatian that is also true you can't be a Dalmatian if you're not a dog because the dog or Dalmatian is a type of dog entirely contained in the set of dogs <laughs> okay so that that kind of concludes all of the um, logic words all right so let's go here now <clears throat> and let's hit some of the other words so I'm gonna I'm gonna refresh my screen actually I'm just going to slide it down okay I'll try to I'm not going in order I'm trying to group these words in logical logical order here okay oh that that actually does bring up another well, there is one more logic word biconditional it works forward and backwards okay okay it is a Dalmatian if and only if and we often shorten that to IFF so feel free to do that in your in your assignments if and only if it's a Dalmatian if and only if it is a dog that is the way to say it forwards and backwards the logical argument here is A implies B and B implies A 
Now this happens to be a biconditional whose truth value is false because it has to be true both forwards and backwards. Okay, but it's a Dalmatian if and only if it's a dog. It can also read it's a dog if and only if it's a Dalmatian because the order doesn't matter in a biconditional. Okay. All right. So let me see equivalent statements. Equivalent statements. Okay. It's a it's basically a, a, a statement that has the same truth value. It's a statement known to have the same truth value. Okay, and where that comes from is the original statement, A implies B, is an equivalent statement to, is an equivalent to state, statement to not B implies not A. So the original statement and its contrapositive are equivalent statements. They really are saying the same thing. And that's kind of, they have the same truth value. And that's probably the be a better definition say the same thing. Okay. Another way to say a Dalmatian, if it's a Dalmatian, then it's a dog, is Dalmatians are dogs. That's an equivalent statement. Okay. It's logically the same thing as saying if it's a Dalmatian, then it's a dog. Equivalent statements. Okay. All right, conclusion content to do. Okay, I'm just kind of going through and making sure I haven't missed anything here. All right, so let's go to let's go to theorem. Theorem. A statement that has been proven. Example, vertical angles are congruent. Okay, and that brings us to proof. A series of logical arguments Taking us from the given to a conclusion. Okay, there's more to it, right? An example. If x equals 5, then x squared equals 25. Proof. 1, x equals 5 is given, 2, five squared equals 25, okay. And the reason we know 5 squared is 25 is uh, multiplication. And we conclude that x squared equals 25. By substitution. Replacing the 5 with x. Okay. So that's an example of a proof. Okay. And it's also an example of a two column proof.
Okay, it has statements on the left, statements. And reasons or rules on the right. Okay, so you have a statement. Each statement is supported by a rule, <coughs> rule or a reason. Okay, and that brings us to paragraph proof. And that's a proof as a paragraph. Example, we were given x equals 5. By multiplication, we know 5 squared equals 25. And therefore, by substitution, x squared equals 25. Done. Okay, so writing it out as a paragraph, giving each statement and each reason in paragraph form. Okay. All right, so now some of the more specific ones here. Almost there. Okay. Reflexive property. Anything equals itself. Example, 5 equals 5, okay? And we really don't use that particular rule in this unit. So if you're tempted to use the reflexive property in proofs in unit 3, you're probably n not correct, okay? It is, it is a, a rule that we're going to use later on when we start proving triangles congruent, but anything is congruent to itself, okay? And this is the other one that a lot of people get it mixed up with. Symmetric property. Okay, basically it says equals is reversible. So it means if 5 equals x, then x equals 5. It's, it's the rule that says I can switch them. Okay, that's the symmetric property. <laughs> Transitive property, this is an important one here. Okay, if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. Example, X equals 5 and Y equals 5. Therefore, since they both equal 5, x equals y. Transitive property. Two things equal to the same thing are equal to each other. Okay. Reflexive, symmetric, two-column proof, paragraph proof, theorem, vertical angles. I think this is our last one. Let me make sure, though. Vertical angles. The official definition is angles formed by opposite rays. So here's my example. We have a ray going off this way and a ray opposite ray going that way. We have a ray going this way and an opposite ray going this way. These are the vertical angles right here, one and two. Okay, and the vertical angle theorem says that vertical angles are always congruent. Okay, so that's vertical angles. 
And let me just double check again, make sure we've answered all. Conclusion, conditional, contrapositive, converse, equivalent statements, hypothesis, inverse, negation, truth value, and biconditional proof, reflexive property, symmetric property, transitive property, two column proof, hypothesis, paragraph proof, theorem, and vertical angles. Yep, that's it. All right, let me know if you have any questions.